Madam President, Admirals, Generals, ladies and gentlemen, and a special warm welcome to the young people from all over the world. You are bringing special flavor in this conference. It's an honor to be invited to speak to you today. <coughs> the circumstances are very special for me. First, I'm speaking here in Tallinn, not far away from Russia. Estonia is the virtual front line of the cyber conflict that just has started. We all just begin to understand its current and potential future implications for everybody and everything in our modern world. And secondly, I'm talking about a topic of which all of you here probably know and understand way better than I could do ever. Let me start my short presentation with an example that shows impressively that the digital revolution has its own unstoppable pace. The iPhone was introduced in 2007. Today, only 12 years later, there are roughly 8.4 billion phones on the market which are connected to the Internet. This is just a reminder on how fast our world gets connected from the single citizen to whole nations and to global industry and organizations. In a reality where cloud computing and big data are the keywords, state institutions, industry, as well as the whole society are dependent on free and safe access to the cyberspace. In our modern world, energy supply, healthcare systems, water and food distribution, and the whole administrative organization of local and state government are unthinkable without the ability to use the cyberspace. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, I'm aware I don't have to stress that point in the beautiful capital of Estonia. You are one of the leading countries in the world in digitalization of public services and administration. The speed of change caused by this technological innovation doesn't stop anywhere, neither in the security area nor does it stop with us in NATO. It offers us nearly unlimited possibilities, but also to malicious actors who want to use those innovative developments to harm our societies and the alliance in and through the cyberspace. And ladies and gentlemen, perhaps we are currently gradually losing the war of cyberspace. Self-imposed constraints on investments, limitations of law and policy, <coughs> consensus, reactiveness, symmetry and proportionality in response, among others, leaves us far behind our adversaries' behavior in the cyberspace. We have been focusing most of our efforts on CIS security and cyber defense of our networks and systems. In the meantime, our adversaries have been using the cyberspace in a novel dimension. They have been using it as a tool and in occasions as a weapon below the threshold of conflict. We have to recognize conflicts of the real world are transferred into the cyberspace. In Europe, this is visible every day. Cyber attacks are constant and they don't only serve the purpose of phishing for and gather information. Especially here in the Baltics, big efforts are made by Russia 
to influence and manipulate public institutions and opinions through the use of cyberspace. Even our NATO enhanced forward present forces are target of false information by trolls and bots. There is a constant fight in the net. By now, it's reality that geostrategic intentions are directly supported by cyber operations. Our adversaries have tried this many times, denying service for whole nations, disrupting their critical infrastructures, exfiltration of data about our civil servants, planting malware in our networks, disseminating false information and creating social unrest, mingling into national election processes. It is easy to see that our adversaries are creating a bundle of cyber-enabled tools to be used in future hybrid warfare. Such future will see CIS security eventually becoming a commodity. A complex one, but just regular daily business. Future warfare will seldom bring us isolated, standalone cyber attacks. Cyber will be employed to create social unrest, exfiltrate or corrupt our information, emotionally disrupt our soldiers and their families, deny our daily operations and create chaos and terror. Additionally, with relatively low barriers to entry, malicious actors can attain the skills and resources required to persistently engage in disruptive cyberspace activities, and they do. Their ability to remotely manipulate and or disrupt activities through cyberspace increases their opportunities to rapidly generate, generate effects while complicating attribution. If we only prepare to secure our communication and information systems, we will fail addressing the global, hybrid and comprehensive challenge. Already in the Wales Summit in 2014, the heads of states and government agreed that cyber defense is part of NATO's core task of collective defense. In 2016, at the Warsaw Summit, they pledged to enhance the cyber defense of their national networks and infrastructures. They also recognized cyberspace as a domain for military operations alongside air, land and sea. However, cyberspace differs from all the other domains as constantly evolving man-made construct. Unlike other domains, NATO, as an international organization, owns, operates and protects its own portion of cyberspace, the so-called NATO enterprise. By doing that and recognizing cyberspace as a domain of military operations, we will be able to improve NATO's ability to conduct operations across all domains and maintain our freedom of action and decision in all circumstances. NATO has already taken steps to operationalize this domain, starting with identifying the NATO cyber system gaps which are being addressed in the NATO command structure functional adaptation process. We have established a cyberspace operations center and to enhance command and control of our operations in and through cyberspace. Allied command transformation is the NATO warfare development command 
does not only develop capabilities for NATO. Indeed, we are very active in our cyberspace operations activities. We develop transformative ideas of tomorrow's cyber warfare, invest in cutting-edge CIS and CIS security infrastructure, and validate them in all sorts of realistic exercises. In addition to that, we coordinate their employment and ensure their interoperability with NATO member states as well as partners to boost their defensive and offensive capabilities. Allied Command Transformation is heavily involved in education and training activities across the board and creates awareness. The Resilience Conference 2019 that was just conducted in April in Norfolk is a good example. This is how we at Allied Command Transformation try to support in various areas such as securing populations and cities in the digital world, developing protection for critical infrastructure and develop a broad range of incident response capabilities. But cyber is a recently created domain for operations in NATO. We, of course, still lack the doctrine and experience of centuries or decades, as in the traditional air, maritime and land domains. Cyber warfare development is essential, urgent and requires a significant level of effort which needs to be prioritized. Over the last three years, we have focused on providing NATO with sp cyber-specific organizations, infrastructure and capabilities, associated doctrine and rules of engagement to enable initial cyber defense. Now, the basic capabilities are in operation Allied Command Transformation needs to continue to focus on cyber warfare horizon scanning, concept development, innovation and quick capability development to provide our warfighters with the capabilities they need to face our adversaries on the same level. This is why we are developing a, a cyberspace strategic foresight analysis to determine our future needs. Furthermore, we develop forward-looking concepts in the area of situational awareness, automated cyber injects, or insider threat detection capabilities. Allied Command Transformation is working along our sister organizations and many other stakeholders to develop future concepts for cyberspace both technical and operational. A good example is the collaboration with the industry. They are key partners for us. The industry does not only provide us with technical support and consultancy services, but also support us in applying lessons learned and reusing knowledge from nations and adopting new technologies. Industry is present in nearly all of our efforts in cyber activity, and we would like to increase this reliable collaboration. It is imperative to include the use of modern technology like big data analysis, machine learning, modeling and simulation, or other tools to get a comprehensive picture of a cyber attack and react tailored to the threat. This endeavor is far away from being over because the ultimate goal must be that we are able to operate from low to high intensity in the cyber domain as we are able to operate 
in the three other domains. In fact, I have to admit that despite of our accomplishments so far, we still have a long way ahead of us. As we still will have to work on cyber doctrine, cyber education and training, exercises and evaluation, as well as at the political level and especially with the legal frameworks. We can already report some success stories, as now all NATO allies have established cyber policy frameworks and some time of organization to coordinate cyber defense and cyber security at the national levels. All of the allies have even incident response capabilities by now. NATO is not alone with its efforts to have policies, structures and mechanisms in place to survive in the cyberspace domain. The European Union, for example, established various, various projects within the framework of permanent structured cooperation to counter and react to attacks in the cyber sector. Therefore, I strongly support and enhance NATO-EU cooperation in this field, as well for the benefit of both organizations. Because NATO is the member nations, a resilient EU nation is at the same time a resilient NATO member. We at NATO are dependent on your support. We need coherency with the efforts that nations and external stakeholders are doing as replication and overlap are luxuries we cannot afford. We need the best ideas from academia and their ability to quickly develop concepts and demonstrators due to their fresh out-of-the-box thinking. We need a common civil-military understanding of cyber and its implication on every aspect of our life. Finally, we need the ability and well-doing for industry to take our concepts forward and industrialize them into capabilities for our warfighters. All of it without losing the perspective on the Alliance collective needs in interoperability and federation. If you prepare for the next war, your preparations are always based on the experiences of the last one. But we have to cut the ties to this rule because there has not been any war and conflict conducted with the means that we are facing today. The closer look to on Estonia's forward-thinking way on how they introduced and managed the digital civil administration of the whole country is outstanding. The ability to ensure safe networks and provide state-of-the-art data projection is an impressive indicator for the way ahead of us. Because the future that has already begun this future is challenging and there will be always a, a resistance and prejudice towards innovative thinking and solutions. But we don't have a choice. 